in a way, the Chacon. I mean, it's. I mean, it depends on how you look at it. But I think there's almost something a bit um, soothing, almost hypnotic, diametrically opposed to to the to the famousness and bigness or whatever you like. Um, I feel most comfortable with it. Um, maybe it's just the key of D minor that really sets. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very settling key for the violin. In its essence, you have a bass line that repeats over and over again throughout the entire piece. And this bass line appears actually in the first couple of bars of, of all four um, of the movements. And so there is definitely a link. And this bass line you can very easily see in the corrente, as a matter of fact, uh, the second movement. Uh. Then of course he develops in a com completely entirely different way. Or uh, again the Aleman, C sharp, implied bass of a D, D flower. So and then um, even more elaborate is um, the Saraband, uh, the third movement. So C sharp again and then and then D. And then he deviates a little, but comes back ultimately to the G. Actually, they're linked, and, and, and for sure, it's a, it's a very conscious thread that, that, that Bach has put in um, as a binding a structural element. You really do, as a listener also, you start hearing a scale of music that, um, that completely, uh, yeah, is paradoxical to, to just this one violinist standing there. He wrote down music for the sake of writing it down and somehow his inner perfectionism or drive to just push that boundary um, just a little bit, you know, how he revises a work, let's say, you know, multiple times. And each time it's, it's better, it really is better. But any of the six, um, and also again, who was it written for? I mean, was it written just as a, a, a an exercise, or was it written for? I mean, we don't know, and so that that also even in the historical, out of a historical perspective, it leaves the question completely unanswered. It seems to have been part of um, Bach's um, personality or Bach's household, just like we you know we do Sudoku or crossword puzzles. I mean, that, that this sort of um, tying music into sort of an intellectual um, game. There's a little bit of um, just sheer pleasure, I think, I'm sure drive in, in writing all this. And so I wouldn't be able to say, um, and anything I, I could say would be purely conjectural. And, um, and um, in a way, yeah, that's, that's why I think there's so many um, interpreta interpretations of, of not just this particular piece, but, but of any. Um, it just kind of stands there waiting to, waiting to be approached.